Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I'm Paul Jensen, and my business is uh, Imagery and Glass, and uh, I uh, focus on etched and carved glass. Now, etching can be uh, uh, any way to abrade the glass. So it can be a Dremel tool, it can be a diamond tool, a uh, laser. In my case, it's all sandblasting. Everything I do is sandblasting. So I'm using it, uh, the sandblaster as a carving tool. I'm using it as a, a shading tool. Um, it, it, it does a lot of different things and it, it leaves me free to uh, use a lot of techniques and, and, and things. So um, uh, I'm able to achieve a lot of results with one tool basically is what it amounts to. So what I do is I start out, we start out with a design. Now the design can be a uh, uh, customer uh, design, as in this case, I'm, I'm using uh, a subcontracting for a, a custom door company. Um, they'll send me a design and then I will take off on that design. Uh, do the working drawings, so everything is all drawn out in pencil. So before we start with anything, we clean the glass and we apply a, a, a rubber matting to the glass on the side that's to, to be carved here. So this is a, a kind of a light rubber matting. It's easy to cut and uh, it's applied right to the glass. The glass is clean very well uh, and, and we stick that down. Once that's done, we apply the drawing to, to the, uh, to the uh, rubber matting, which is also called uh, stencil or uh, resist. Uh, the drawing will be laid down with the pencil side down, right on top of the resist. And I've already got one down here, uh, and it's uh, sitting right on top there. It's taped down in the, in the right position. And so what I do is then I just take anything, and I'm, in this case I'm using a little, a little uh, uh, container to, to rub off the pencil marks on, on, the, uh, on the stencil or the resist. And I've already done a little bit of it beforehand, so we can take a look here and the pencil mark will rub right off onto the, uh, the resist. Okay, in this case here, I'm doing a, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's gonna be a deer scene on this one. You got two deer here, there's gonna be kind of a lake, and uh, everything is rubbed off, and looks like it's, looks like it's gonna work. So we just take that off. Now comes kind of the tedious part. You have to ink all these lines in now. So we grab the trusty Bic pen here and we just, uh, just ink in all the lines because once we start sandblasting uh, on, on this, the pencil lines will blow away essentially and uh, there will be nothing left for me to, uh, to see where I'm going or, or what I'm doing. Now this is gonna be a combination of carving and uh, shading and a uh, little bit of all the techniques that I use here. So the deer will be deep carved, the, uh, the background here will be shaded in, and, and, uh, and, and the lake will be slightly shaded, so you all, these little areas right here will be, uh, will be really finely uh, blasted in so to make it look like, like waves, essentially. It's just a, you know, just, these are just working drawings, essentially, the art part hasn't even started yet, you know, I mean, so, so uh, that's what's kind of fun about, about doing this. There's so many different levels to the art. So you have to do the drawings, which is one part of the art. Uh, you have to, you know, do all the cutting, knowing how, which uh, to pull off first. So, so that, and, and that'll come right now. We'll, uh, we'll use the X-Acto knife to cut on the inked parts then. Now, with, when you're carving, you have to remember that anything that sticks out at you in the picture, the, 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 the closest thing to you will be blasted first. So in this case, like let's say we're blasting the, uh, we're doing the uh, antler first because the antler is in front of these trees, so that's gotta be blasted first, okay? So we'll, and this part of the antler right here is in front of this part of the antler. So you gotta kinda work backwards, essentially, is what you're doing. So what you're doing is you're carving into the, the, the uh, medium. Uh, with uh, wood, you're carving around it so your, your image sticks up. This is actually into it, so it's viewed from the opposite side. So, so everything carved will be uh, 3D. And now if I wanted to 
do this, I would cut this out here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this part of the antler. And, and everything will get cut out. Before I even go into the blasting booth to uh, blast this, this will all be cut out. So when I'm in there, I'm just gonna start pulling pieces, okay? So now this, this little piece is in front of these two pieces of the antler here, okay? So this is the very first thing that I'm gonna blast on this project right here. So what I'll do is I'll pull that off like that, okay? That'll be blasted first. It's tough to get a handle on it at first because you're working backwards, but uh, once you do, it's hard to get a handle on working forwards again after you do it for a while, so. Now, uh, once I'm in the booth, and because the, uh, the booth isn't very uh, camera friendly, we'll, we'll just uh, do a little demonstration right here. Um, when you're in the booth, there, there's three things that you need for, uh, for uh, doing abrasive blasting. You need an air compressor, you need uh, a pot such as this, so something to hold the abrasive in, and you need the abrasive. All the abrasive will be recycled in the booth, so once it's done blasting, all the abrasives blast out, it's swept up, put back in, and it just keeps on recycling until uh, it, it's all gone. When you're in the booth, because I have a walk-in booth, I need a, a hood with an air supply, and I'll need a, a, a dust, dust collector, something to ventilate, you know, so, so you need to be safe about that. Um, once I'm in there, once this is in there, I will start blasting. So I'll, I'll, I have this pulled already. I'll blast this first. I'll pull this next, pull this next, you know, and, and on down the line. Just keep working myself, uh, you know, all the way through the whole, whole picture. Something like this might take about a week to totally finish up. When I'm in the booth, this, uh, this pot will be hooked up to the uh, air compressor. The hose goes right on here. This is my regulator. Uh, this will let the air come into the tank. The tank will, uh, will fill up with air. And then I just use this uh, ball valve here to, uh, uh, you know, to turn it on and off. I'll adjust the flow out of the bottom. There's a little ball valve down here. The aperture, uh, the hole in, in here is about a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, and, and uh, that's about perfect for the kind of carving that I'm doing. Okay, once I'm in there, this is set up on the easel. I'm gonna start blasting. I have my hood on, and uh, what I do is just turn it on. The abrasive comes out of here, goes into here, and I carve it as deep as I need it to be. Now that's kind of the art of it, knowing when to stop, because you can blast all the way. I've done it before, blast all the way through the glass when, when you're starting out. If you're car carving something deep, you don't want that, okay? You want it to look real deep, but it, in, in reality, it's really not that deep. So, so I'll start blasting here. Pull that off, blast, pull that off, blast, on down the line, and uh, and and I'll keep uh, taking it out of the booth every once in a while, taking a look at it, uh, seeing how everything's coming along, and, and just uh, and uh, making sure that uh, everything looks the way I want it to. So, okay, what I'd kind of like to do is just uh, do a start to finish real uh, real small project. We're going to start with the glass fab first. Uh, in this case, I'm cutting a diameter out of uh, a 12 inch diameter out of some quarter inch uh, glass here. And we'll just go ahead and start breaking it. Now, we have to get this uh, little circle out of here. We have our 12 inch circle, so now we're going to want to uh, sand the edges real quick. So we wash it off good now, make sure the compound's all off. So we can apply some. Uh, some stencil or uh, another name for it, resist to it. So, here we go. We got our stencil on here. We have our uh, uh, glass. It's ready to go. Um, the pattern can be transferred on. In this case, uh, uh, I had the pattern on, on this one already done. In this case, I'm just going to draw something freehand on here. And we'll just go with something uh, maybe maybe just a little uh, little free-flowing, something uh, like this. Now these are overlapping each other, so I'm gonna do a quick carving on them here in just a little bit. Now we'll cut it out. Now we gotta decide which ones we want out first, or which ones we wanna blast first. This is, uh, this is where it gets a little complicated. This is going over top of this, okay? 
and this is going underneath this so they're kind of overweaving each other now if I was to pull this off all the way it would get into this one so so you kind of want to just be able to blast right you know right where you need to get that a little bit deeper right here and then once you blast that it, it'll be underneath it so now the one thing about uh, this type of uh, work is it's pretty unforgiving if you mess up when you're blasting after you've worked on something about a week you can mess up the whole thing and have to start all over again so you gotta really be on your toes when you're, you're working with it so right now it's ready to take it to the booth and uh, I guess I'll do that and see you in a bit <laughs> um, so here it is we've uh, blasted it if you look from this side you can kind of see if you look close enough how these overlap each other here so once we have that all blasted it's all done we're just going to remove the uh, move the uh, the resist um, and there we go there's a finished product If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008.